Hello, Community of Hope. I am so glad that we get to be with you. I have told you about this woman. I think she came and visited once before, um, but you have a celebrity talking to you. Well, celebrity, what do I mean by that? Well, um, she is an incredible lady. Um, she's my co-pastor. She's my best friend. Um, she has four children. She is like a superwoman and she loves God. I know, I know, but it's the truth. So I want to tell you, first of all, Happy Mother's Day, and I love you. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, and Jill, take it away. Good morning, church family. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for that. Those, all those lovely words. I'm so blessed to be with you today as a pastor and a mother. I have been blessed with four children and one and a half grandchildren. Life has been fun, easy, hard, trying, exciting, sad. As a mother and a woman, I've had great role models in my life, starting with my mother and grandmother and onward. God has been the focus and dependency for everything. For our talk today, I'd like to share with you some of what God has shown me. This is the Bible, the Word of God. I believe it and I live by it. I let it be the guide in all that I do. There's a woman in here I'd like to call your attention to, Elizabeth. Some of you may remember her. She was the wife of Zechariah, the mother of John the Baptist, cousin to Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Bible tells us a few things about her that show us exactly who she is. As we turn to Luke chapter 1 in our Bible, men, I don't mean to leave you out this morning, but our focus today is on our mothers and the women of our life. So I encourage you to also read Luke 1 and look at Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband. Luke 1.5 says, in the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Elizabeth had a heritage. She was from a family that went as far back as Aaron, went all the way back to Aaron. Aaron, it was this Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, bring the Israelites out of Egypt. In each generation, the high priest who succeeds Aaron must prepare this offering, the same offering it says in Le Leviticus 6.22. It belongs to the Lord and must be burnt up completely. This is a permanent law. Second Chronicles 26.18 also said, that is the work of the priests alone, the descendants of Aaron, who was set apart for this work. So when it says that she comes from the descendants of Aaron. That is what they're talking about. Both her and her husband, Zechariah, they observed, they were righteous in the sight of God and they observed all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. It is because of this heritage, a part of this priestly order that she was a part of. She knew the scriptures and she followed them and the ways of the Lord God, but still bad things happen to good people. And I'm not talking about perfection because we know that there are no perfect people and we know that there aren't really any good people. You're all imperfect, we're all imperfect and we've all sinned and fallen short. But I'm talking about those people that try to do right. The scripture goes on and tells us that Elizabeth was barren. She was unable to have children, which was a big disgrace in her community. Year after year, no kids. 
something that kind of defined you as a woman in those days, whether good or bad, at least in the eyes of their society. Remember Hannah, the mother of Samuel in the Old Testament? She went many years without having a child and was ridiculed and persecuted by her rival. Likewise with Sarah, Abraham's wife. She couldn't have children. In both these cases, these women were loved by their husbands more than any other. Bad things happen to good people. But getting back to Elizabeth, the Bible says she was now very old. I, went, I wonder how many of us think the situation we find ourselves in has gone on too long. And it's just too old now. We've been go doing what's right and following the rules as it were, and still nothing. We've been praying and doing what the Bible says and what we've been taught to do, and still nothing. Luke 1, 23 to 24 goes on to say about Elizabeth, that Zachariah returned home and she becomes pregnant. The Bible skips over a lot of the details of everyday life at Elizabeth and Zechariah's house. Can you imagine the confusion Elizabeth must have felt when her husband came home unable to speak? Or the frustration she has now to learn not only what happened as he went away to serve in the temple, but how they must now communicate. It's trauma, it's a trial. But I wanna point out that Elizabeth stayed the course. She somehow re remained faithful to her husband in the midst of the trauma and the trials, the frustrations and the confusion. She remained faithful to the point of, uh, dare I say it, her marital commitments to Zechariah that led her to become pregnant. The scripture doesn't tell us that the Holy Spirit came upon her like her cousin Mary in verse 35 of the same uh, Luke chapter one. But it does say that no word from God will ever fail. So just as he said it to Zechariah in the temple that Elizabeth would bear a son, they had to become intimate in order for this to happen, correct? Ladies, let me speak to you directly for a minute. First of all, to the married ladies. How many times have we let our emotions in a situation from work or whatever decide if we will be intimate with our husbands? We make the excuses, whether it's we're too tired or the kids or the, the job, too much on our mind. Um, it also a chance to be in control, to have the upper hand. You know, in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, it's, it tells us that we who are married are not to withhold our bodies from each other except when agreed upon and only for a time of prayer. Hmm. And you're, you unmarried ladies, you're not excused from staying the course either. For what about when you are called upon to stay committed to a situation? It's so easy to fall into self-focus or self-centered attitudes where it becomes about me rather than the heart of submission or giving. As young women, unmarried, there are certain lessons you've been taught and that in your heritage or lessons you've learned along the way. In life, you, you just know better, you, but sometimes it's easier to disregard the course and go another way and miss the blessing or the answer or the solution that is just around the corner if you would only stay the course. Elizabeth became pregnant after Zechariah returned home and she was able to say later on in verse 25, the Lord has done this for me. She said, in these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my dis disgrace among the people. Sometimes the prayers God wants to answer are situations he wants to bring us through. The favor he wants to show us, the disgrace he wants to take away is just around the corner if we would just stay the course. Another thing I'd like to point out in Elizabeth's life as we read um, Luke 1, 39 to 49, 45, it says, at 
that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Remember that while this is happening with Zechariah and Elizabeth across the country, God is also doing a work with Mary and Joseph. So Mary, who is now pregnant too, comes to see her cousin Elizabeth, who is much older, and Elizabeth's baby leaps for joy in, at the greeting from Mary, and there's great excitement. But I don't want us to miss the second part of verse 41. It says, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so he can be our guide. He can direct us, he can comfort us, he can be our advocate, he can give us power, keep us encouraged. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness. Notice the boldness that Elizabeth shared as she prophesied to Mary. Luke 12, 12 says, the Holy Spirit will teach you at all times what you should say. Elizabeth's words were full of wisdom and encouragement and it was a blessing to Mary. We must be available for the Holy Spirit to use us for a blessing to others as well. Can I say to both the men and the women today, bad things happen to good people. Even when you follow all the rules, and you do the right things and say the right things, bad things can and do happen. But God wants you to hold on to him, the all-knowing one for you to stay the course, even when circumstances change and shift, when it's not to our liking or in our comfort zone, we need to stay the course, keep doing what we know to be right. The song we're singing these days says, even when I don't see it, he's working. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love him who've been called according to his purpose. It says in Romans chapter eight, verse 28. The Holy Spirit comes on you and it gives you the power that you need to be witnesses. We wanna be a witness. We must be ready to be that witness. That's where the Holy Spirit fills us and we're available for him to use us. I understand where you are today in my life, I've seen my children in the hospital bed. I've seen them with disappointments that they've been through. And as a mother, I understand the pain of not being able to do anything but pray and trust God that he, makes, he would make the way, that he would bring the sun out again. All that I've been able to do is to really believe his word and wait on him. Today, both men and women, even as I say Happy Mother's Day, both men and women, I tell you, bad things are gonna happen, but we must stay the course. We must follow through on the things we know to do and let God do the rest. We must allow the Holy Spirit to use us, make sure our lives are ready to receive him, that he can use us, that we can be an encouragement and a blessing to others. Let me pray for you. Father God, we thank you today that you're a God that sees us, you know everything that is happening to us. 
I thank you, O oh God, for the women and the men that are within the hearing of my voice that call to you and call out to you, that put their trust in you, that follow your ways, O oh God. I pray today, O oh God, that you would help them to truly, truly trust in you, putting all their trust in you, that you would help them, Lord God, to stay the course of that which they know to do, to know that you are more than able to keep that which they've committed unto you. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in the lives of each of us that we can be a truly a witness for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>